All right. Hello, everyone. You have Lisa and Ryan today. We are discussing weight loss. Whoa. It's a very, very popular topic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot to discuss. So we're going to kind of try to condense it all. And you guys always know that we're here via email to right. answer any further questions. So first off, I want to talk about weight loss. And what I really want to talk about is like the difference between weight loss and fat loss. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I don't necessarily like to say weight loss because the weight is just a number on the scale. What's most important is what's going on inside of our body. Like if we have a ton of muscle, we're gonna weigh a lot as well. So you don't wanna just, I don't wanna focus on, on the number on the scale. Sure. I wanna talk more about fat loss, okay? With that, yes, if you have a lot of weight to lose with fat loss comes weight loss. But um, it's more, it's most important when you think about your, your body composition, we are made up of fat mass and fat free mass in that fat free mass is also our, our muscle mass, yep. but also our bones, mm -hmm. um, organs, yep. you know, so that all compromises our fat free mass. And then we have our fat mass. Okay. That's the one that really plagues us. That's the one that's detrimental to our health. That's the one that causes rise in metabolic disorders, right? Obviously obesity. So we want to work on decreasing body fat. With that, we also want to work on increasing our muscle mass, okay? So mm -hmm. sometimes on your scale, um, when you just start, say you just start diet, eat, eating right and working out, lifting weights, whatnot, your actually number on the scale might kind of start to go up first because building muscle happens a little bit faster than losing fat. So it's a really funny thing. And it, sometimes it can deter somebody when they just start a program, they're trying so hard, busting their butt and the scale e is either not moving or maybe it's increasing a little bit. So again, another reason why I don't like to focus on the number on the scale. But again, the goal is say you have fat mass here and muscle mass here. You want fat mass to go down at the same time as muscle mass to go up. Okay. Um, Ryan, you're going to give us, can you give us some statistics on this? Oh, yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah. And like Lisa said on fat mass, there's actually two types of that too. There's an essential fatty mass, which we're not talking about. We're talking about the stored fat mass, the stored fat. That's like the excess, they call it adipose tissue. That's the fat mass that we're encouraging people to be very much more aware of. And of course, be aware of the risk factors associated with carrying excess uh, adipose tissue, so excess stored fat. And that's the problem. I mean, ultimately it's a metabolic disease, right? And that's what happens. Fat is not very good at doing much at all. It's stored energy, but it's really not very efficient. It's it, compared to muscle. Muscle is so much more, more dense. It's a denser uh, mass. So yeah, it, weighs it, it, it weighs more and it takes up less space. So go back to the scale, scale thing, you know, you could actually be losing say size, but the scale is going up. Right. And so that's what we want to encourage you guys to recognize. That's an important, uh, I would say an accomplishment. Yeah. Good job if you're doing that. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, being a metabolic disease, it really is a scary, scary, scary thing. And I, and like, we're going in the total wrong direction. You hear me run on and on and on about the epidemic of like hypertension or uh, heart disease and cancer and diabetes and obesity. And it's really running out of control. It's absolutely out of control. Um, there is no magic bullet as hard as we try and as much as we've talked about it. And there's just no way that you can actually solve the problem with just one particular thing. Like a rabbit hole I could go down is pharmaceuticals, but I will not do it. Lisa will not let me do it. But if you have questions related to it, I'm happy to answer it because it is in the news. It is all over the Today Show and Good Morning America and all the main, main news outlets have ca are carrying stories on it right now. So happy to answer questions offline on that one. Um, but yeah, statistics are crazy. 75% of uh, people are considered overweight, overweight of adults are considered overweight or obese. Three out of four people are over, that's nuts. <laughs> It's like not even, like, it's unprecedented. It's never been that high. It's trending in the wrong direction. Very, very sad. Very sad. Children, 40 some percent now, 40 some percent of kids. And you know what's happening to these poor, poor children? You know, they're losing their confidence right out of the gate. They have no confidence. They're socially isolated now. They're being bullied. I mean, this is a disaster uh, written all over it. And, you know, then chronic disease starts to set in an early age too. And, and we're talking about hypertension is the number one killer. I'm sorry, heart disease is the number one killer. And you know, the numbers are just, again, staggering. The, the correlation to obesity is there. Um, uh, diabetes, of course, because it's a metabolic, say, disease. I, we're not talking about whether or not obesity is considered a disease. I'm telling you that obesity is, has, is, meta, is metabolic dysfunction. 
And what does that really mean? Well, metabolism is simply a function of, say, creating and destroying, right? Catabolism and anabolism. So really, that's the challenge for us is when we start to mess with our metabolic function, you know, you're, you're not like you're into your, 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 your uh, organs, your, your pancreas, you're, you're not releasing insulin properly, or you're become if they are releasing insulin, it's not, it's resistant because you're, you're um, like now becoming type two diabetic, which, I mean, I think the numbers are crazy, even so crazy on this, like half of the American population is either pre-diabetic type one or type two, like one out of two people are either pre-diabetic type one or type two. And then the strong correlation between diabetes and Alzheimer's and dementia. Sure. So you're, it's just on a, on oh, a path to a disaster. It really is. But it's, it's really quite crazy is because the slightest, the smallest increment of weight loss can have profound effect. You know, and we'll talk about how nutrition is, run, is, a, is part of that as well. And that's a big focus for today's discussion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so we jump into that. Yeah, let's, we'll go into the pillars of health. Can you list those? And then we'll kind of- Yeah, I mean, these are them. personal to us and we've just kind of d dissected them in different ways over the years. But yeah, I think the pillars of health and uh, most relevant to today's discussion is really nutrition, supplements, exercise, sleep, stress, and socialization. So we can't get into all those today. We'll do different webinars and really to kind of dissect each one. Uh, and again, each one of those could be its own topic on itself, but we're going to really try to kind of get into and give you some real like simple, actionable, hopefully educational things that you can take away from this to help get started. Because I believe Lisa and her, your, her experience, I mean, Lisa has been an exercise physiologist, personal trainer. She's a certified health coach. I mean, she has been in this business for quite some time helping people. Seen a lot. Seen a lot. <laughs> right. So and it's at the end of the day, it's really hard because it's, you know, it's, it's not a one size fits all approach. And I think Lisa would be able to comment on that a little bit more. So. Uh, what do you want to do next? Yeah, so, well, really, I want to talk about starting with nutrition, because I just think that the major, major, major player into this, um, I mean, exercise is great. I love it. We all need it, but you can't, ex you can't out-exercise a bad diet. Sure. Like, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so I get the question a lot is, oh, what diet is best? Now, I hate using the word diet, but mm -hmm. like when you are changing away, it's a changing away to your diet. So we're just going to, we're just going to call it that for today. What diet is best? There is no single one that is best. And what I say, what the one that is best is the one that you're going to stick with because there's nothing good about doing something. Let's say I'm going to do keto for a couple months and then you realize, oh, that's too restrictive for me. Then you get off of it. And then what happens, you get like this yo-yo mm -hmm. in weight loss and weight gain, which is also extremely stressful on the body um, and not healthy for the body. So you really need to find something that um, you're going to stick with. Now, if it's something like you want to kickstart it off with a keto, that is something like, again, it's a very restrictive program. And then you have a game plan. You always need a game plan. Mm -hmm. Then you have a game plan to slide into a, another diet. Maybe it's, maybe it's paleo. Maybe it's just a straight whole foods based diet. You're going to eat everything that's whole food sources, which I, which I preach 100% you should do anyways, fruits, vegetables, um, lean meats fish. Um, let's stay away from, we've always heard it stay on oh, dairy, or, mm. you know, dairy, if, if dairy works for you, eggs. Um, but again, stay away from those center aisles. I'm sure you've heard that in the grocery store, all those aisles that you can go up and down. I mean, that's typically where you get your box stuff that does not have much nutritional value. Now there's some stuff in there that you need. Yes. But um, mainly a whole foods thing. So find a diet that works for you. If you have specific questions about one, definitely let me know. I'm not going to dissect all the different diets because there's thousands of them out there. Some of them very big fads to so stay away from fad diets. Just as Ryan said, like there's no magic bullet. We will never tell you at live good. Like we have this great mm -hmm. thing. That's going to make you lose 10 pounds in one week because mm -hmm. that's not real. And it's also not sustainable. Like mm -hmm. you need to do something that you can do for the rest of your life, because it's not like, we're not just trying to lose weight real quick for something. Okay. We're trying to be full on healthy for the rest of our lives, right? And this goes with your family too, how, how Ryan was saying something about childhood ob obesity. You have to think about what you're doing for yourself. You also have to do for your children. We can't be eating all these whole food sources and then buying our kids Lucky Charms and um, um, Twinkies mm -hmm. and you know junk like that. So it goes for everybody. Um, okay, so we talked about best diet, whatever's gonna work for you, whatever you're gonna stick with, eating whole foods, always focus on whole food sources. Um, I know you wanted to ask me a little bit about intermittent fasting, right? You had asked a question about that. Yeah, sure. um, and sure. I know a lot of people also do reach out to me about intermittent fasting and my take on it. Now, there's lots of different schools of thought out there, um, lots of different science behind all different ways of intermittent fasting. But I want to tell you that 
What's most important about fasting is that you fast for a solid 12 hours. Now, if you think about that, guys, that's pretty easy. You're probably already doing that anyways, from the time you finish dinner to sleeping through the night and then waking up and having whenever you have breakfast. The reason you need to do the 12 hours is when we sleep, when we are resting, when we are fasting, our, our body's um, doing its healing and repairing. If you give it food, it's gonna go straight to digestion. So then your body's not doing the other things that it needs to do. Say even you have like a little injury going on. It's not going to be able to focus all its attention on that injury when you're constantly feeding it, because then it's going to say, oh, now we need to digest. Now we need to digest. That's where those 12 hours come into play. Um, most people know about the most common internet intermittent fasting is the 16-8, right? Where you fast for 16 hours and then you eat for eight hours. That can also be a great way for you to control your calorie intake, Okay. Um, but again, you have to find what works for you. You can you can fast for 14 hours. Um, some people like to throw in a 24 hour, um, which you don't have to do all the time, but like you could do a 24 hour water fast once a month. Um, again, you have to find out what works for you. Me personally, I'm about 14 to 15 hour fast because um, I'm very careful of not to overstress my body with that, which goes right into um, for, especially for pre-menopausal women. For premenopausal women, you also have to be careful with fasting too much because you could really screw up your hormones. Mm. It can actually cause a high stress response in your body. And then your hormones get thrown off. And then what happens? We gain weight. Okay. So it's like, you're, you're just fighting against your body. You have to go with what's what, what your body is actually telling you. So to me, after I, after I work out, have my overnight fast, it's about 14 to 15 hours. My body's like, all right, Lisa, it's time to eat. And then I break my fast. Um, so again, find that sweet spot that works for you, but it is another way, if you want to call it a diet, it is another way to control what you are eating and, and how often and when. So how, you can only get so much food in in that eight hour window. So it can help you, especially if you need to go on a little bit of calorie deficit to lose weight. Okay, that was a big one. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about macros and oh, yeah. micros. Um, so we'll get more into, I'll let Ryan get more into the micronutrients and um, that's all your vitamins and minerals. So that's going to kind of tie into like, you know, with a uh, supplementation, but your macros, you also need to make sure you're getting all your macronutrients. Okay. Those are your um, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Um, the most important one really is protein. Okay. And I want to emphasize um, protein intake. I've, we've done um, zooms on this, so I'm not going to go into super detail, but you need to make sure you're eating enough protein for weight loss. You have got to do it. Mm -hmm. um, a great way to think about it is incorporate some type of protein at every single meal, not to mention the easiest way to get 20 grams of protein in there is our, um, our protein powder. Um, so got to focus on your protein. It's also going to help you eat less. Okay. Because you're going to feel full after a meal. Think about if you just eat a plain salad, or if you have like a nice five ounce piece of chicken breast, um, and a little bit of broccoli, you're going to feel full. So you're not going to feel like snacking right away or like, oh, how am I going to make it to dinner? I'm starving. So make sure you're getting that protein in there. Uh, calories do matter. I, I hate that whole theory of like, if it fits in your calorie calories, eat it because you've got to feed yourself like real nutrition, real whole foods. Yeah. What you eat actually matters. Um, and if you're needing to lose weight, you do need to be at a little bit of a calorie deficit. You have to be there for the body fat to go down, but you want to be careful not to go too low in that. Cause a lot of people think, Oh, well, I want to lose weight. I'm just not going to eat. Well, that's a problem, right? Backfire. Because first, yes, it backfires hundred percent. I'll tell you why it backfires is because it starts to slow your metabolism down. We want our metabolism going. We want our bodies working for us when we're resting, when we're doing nothing. We don't just want it working for us when we're exercising or trying. We want to be super efficient. When you're not eating enough, especially for a long amount of time, your body starts to slow down its metabolism because it thinks, hmm, I don't know when I'm going to eat again. Okay, it, Your body's not your brain. It doesn't know when you're going to eat again. So naturally, it slows everything down to preserve what is there. So you've got to make sure you're eating enough, but also be, again, be at that little bit of a calorie deficit, be below your calorie, calorie goal. Um, and I'll give you some tips on how to calculate all that in general. So again, you got to eat to lose. You really do. I've had so many patients that I've worked with one-on-one -on -one that they, when they tell me, oh, I'm only eating 1200 calories a day. I'm like, well, there's your problem. So I increase their calories, say to 1600 or somewhere up in, in, you know, 1800 calories a day. And what starts to happen? The fat melts off of them. Guys, I'm serious. It's the hardest concept because like, wait, how do I eat more, but then lose weight? It's real. If you eat the right things, 
you will, I promise. Um, eliminate added sugars. Mm -hmm. Sugar in general is like the root cause of like everything. Sugar is horrible. So please eliminate those added sugars. Leave yourself maybe one little small uh, dessert a few times a week. If a piece of dark chocolate after dinner, we always go for our, our, another serving of our protein powder because it really is delicious. Um, okay, that's a lot about nutrition. Do you have any questions on that? Anything that I missed? Man, I, we can tell you're passionate about it. You know your yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I don't have anything specific on that. Okay. And then I'm going to tap into exercise. And I don't want to get too into too specifics on exercise because everybody is in their own um, situation. Okay. What do you have access to? What your time allows you? But the biggest thing you need to understand is you've got to move your body every day. Mm -hmm. If you're at a computer job and I get these emails, well, I sit for eight hours a day. Well, why are you sitting? <laughs> you know, you can stand up. You can, you can request maybe a, um, uh, a standing desk, uh, or you can build one, right? You just need to build something elevated. Your body's working harder when you're standing. Um, so get, get a standing desk or set an alarm. Okay. Every 15 minutes. I know Apple watch does it too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What is it? Get up Do you know how move. often? Mm -hmm. Every like 15, 20 minutes, get your body up and move. If you're in the office, go to the water cooler, go to, go to the kitchen, what, whatever you have to do, just move your body. And tell your boss it'll increase productivity. It, and 100%, focus. it will 100% well. <laughs> um, and then there's two types of, of um, exercise, right? You have your resistance training, your, your weight lifting, um, and which can also be done with body weight because, you know, it is a weight. And then you have your cardiovascular exercise. We really do need both of them. Um, it's hard to say, choose one or the other. Like, look, if you told me you had only three hours um, a week to commit to exercise, I would say do two 30 minutes of each, you know, a week. So I'm just giving an example if you have like super limited time, but you need to do the, the cardiovascular training. You need it for your heart, but it also helps with weight loss, but you've got to put, you've got to lift weights. You've got to put muscle on. And what does muscle do for us? It helps us burn fat. Muscle increases your metabolism. Then it's your body's just burning fat. So the more muscle you have, the more fat you're going to burn. The scale might say you weigh a little more, but you know, if you can know your body composition, which I'll, I'll give you some tips on how to know that. If you can know that, you can see the conversion of it all. Um, it's a really rough rule of thumb for exercise. Uh, and I got to just say it, it, it's on most days of the week. That's the guidelines. Exercise on most days of the week. Guys, that's four days. Okay, if we ever got a seven day week, that's four days. You've got to at least go for those four days. Just like I said, with the fasting, you've got to at least fast the 12 hours. Do the bare minimum, guys. And if you can do more, I mean, huge bonus. Things will just happen faster. This is not easy. Weight loss is not easy. No, not. I will tell you, it's easier to maintain when you get to where you are. So don't think of it as like, I can't do this forever. You can, you've got to put the work in if you actually want it. Okay. Don't just say, I want to take this pill and lose 20 pounds and, be, and everything's great because it doesn't work that way. Um, okay. That's a little bit about exercise. It's a lot. Sure. We should um, do our own thing just on exercise. Sure, for sure. And then touching on just sleep and stress. The only thing I really want to say is when you're not getting seven to nine quality hours of sleep, what typically happens is we make poor food choices. Um, we're too tired to exercise and our stress goes up. Okay. There goes stress. What mm -hmm. happens when our stress goes up, guys? It increases our cortisol. Ryan can dig into mm -hmm. that a little more. But what happens when our cortisol is up? We gain weight. <laughs> so it's kind of like a whole vicious cycle. And that's what we call it the pillars of health. Health. You really need all of it put together for your body to work. You want your body to work for you, not against you. So if it's working against you, you got to figure out why. Um, all right, let's take that, Ryan, into supplements. Cool. And then uh, sounds yeah. good. Before we do the hold up real quick, let's okay. look and see if there's any questions here. I know there's a few, but we'll talk about the protein question. There's a honey honey question or a honey comment. Uh do, 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 do breaks reduces sugar cravings, breaking cravings. I mean, yeah, we could get into it. That's probably one gram of uh talk about the cravings question. Though. Okay, but one gram per pound of body weight is a great, yes, a it's great a goal to work up yeah, to. That's a sure. high number. Yep. It's hard to hit. Two questions. About which product helps break or reduce sugar cravings? Um, okay. Maybe intermittent fasting. Yeah. Okay. No. So the biggest thing with sugar. So I want to tell you this: sugar, um, chocolate, which you can consider sugar, but sugar, chocolate, cheese—they all light up the same brain center that cocaine does. Okay. So 
that's why it is so hard to cut that sugar mm. out. I really want you to, if you have sugar cravings, if you cannot avoid that sugar, you have got to stop it for two weeks. It is not going to be easy. You will probably go have withdrawal symptoms. You will have headaches. You will be dreaming of sugar. I promise you, but it's two weeks. Once you can get to that two week, and when I say two weeks of cutting out sugar, guys, it's even wise to cut out everything that's sweet, even fruit, just for two weeks. Um, Cause that can kind of trick your brain that you are getting something, which I do like that once we're past the, that, you know, a sugar addiction phase. Um, Cause if I need something sweet, I'll go to my fridge and I'll grab a handful of raspberries or something. And it's great. Um, but you've got to break that sugar habit. It's not going to help. It's not going to work for you. I promise you, you will constantly be feeding for that sugar to light up that higher brain, that brain center. Um, so that's, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Get that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good answer. <laughs> what was it about honey? That's just comment that they use honey every single day. Oh, just, yeah. I mean, look, know. honey has its health benefits. And if you're using a teaspoon of honey, say you're using uh, honey in your tea, a teaspoon of honey, great. But now- do you want to go and have a uh, half a cup of honey every day? Absolutely not. Think about how much sugar that is, not to mention how many calories that is. And you're trying to be on, you know, a, a calorie type of deficit if you are trying to lose weight. Sure. What sure. else we have? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. What's next? Supplements. Oh, sure. All right. So uh, you kind of, yeah, supplements, <laughs> right. Uh, part of, part of the plan definitely doesn't do everything that Lisa just said, because there's, oh, it's an entire lifestyle but what the supplements do provide is, is essential micronutrients. And those are the things your body does not make. You have to supplement or get from your food and your food sources, which you're typically not getting enough of anyway. And the same kind of concept as the critical macronutrients that she talked about, the protein, fat, carbohydrates. You've got to supplement properly. You've got to consume them properly. So the concept at Live Good, though, we wanted to focus on the body composition argument, that piece for a lean muscle mass, to increase lean muscle mass. And that's, that's important because the lean muscle mass, again, is... Is a, is, is a more dense tissue, but it's also way more metabolically active. It's a huge energy demand center. So the more lean muscle mass you have, the higher your resting metabolic rate will be. And Lisa talked about metabolic rate and metabolism. And you'll literally burn more calorie, calories and significantly more at rest if you have more lean muscle mass. And so that's, I mean, that's to me, like that's the only way that this makes, this whole thing makes sense. So we, what we did was we started, uh, let's, let's uh, attack the foundation first. So the foundation is going to be the, the live good bioactive complete multivitamin contains essential, mi essential micronutrients. So those are the things your body's not getting, not, not making on its own, your vitamins and some minerals. So that's what's there. And then there's B vitamin complex. Um, it's formulated for men and women. So it contains all of those essential, uh, well, not all of them, but most. And that's a really important foundational supplement. The next foundational supplement we have is the vitamin D3 with K2. D3 with K2, guys, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, best taken with food usually in the morning, and it helps actually regulate some of the melatonin, suppress some of the melatonin, so it's involved in your sleep and awake cycle. Oh, there you go. Um, but the, the vitamin D3 is, is super, super heavy duty involved in bone, in bone health, in immune function, in energy, in mood. Um, but as we're talking about aging and lean muscle mass preservation, you know, it's a big part of that discussion is your bone health as well as your hormone health. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. Um, so yeah, that's vitamin D. Now that's but with 2000 units and you guys can watch the, the YouTube videos on D. We'll get real granular on that. Magnesium is a, a, just an absolutely a monster in this, this uh, foundational supplement because it's involved in over 300 biochemical reactions. But think about this. Magnesium has a huge role in bone health in muscle and nerve function. It's like being involved in over 300, it's involved in hormone, um, it's involved in it's sleep regulation, stress regulation. So it's, it's really critical that we get enough magnesium. Most people are not, most people are not. Now of all of these, the vitamin D is easy to, to measure in the blood test, magnesium, not as easy, not as easy. And then of course, all the micronutrients in our panels, but that's not really something we recommend you do. Then we decided we're going to try to go after, we're going to attack the protein hypothesis. So we wanted to add in, what you get is you get your choice of amino acids. You get two tubs, two tubs of the complete plant-based protein. And the idea here is that you're, you're not, you're probably not getting enough protein in your diet. That's the concept because the amino acids um, will, can be counted towards, towards your protein goal, but amino acids, protein and protein are both well, protein is just amino acid, truthfully what it is. They're the building blocks of life. 
quite frankly. So they're really, really involved in, in, the, in the metabolism of um, hormones, of enzymes, of neurotransmitters. So let's talk about that for a second. Hormone dysregulation, huge problem, huge problem with obesity, yeah. right? So much dysregulation going on. I know that's a hot topic for Lisa. We probably will do a Zoom literally just on hormones. It's, it's a lengthy discussion. We're both pretty well educated in, on that topic. But so it's a precursor to hormones. It's a precursor to enzymes, which are really important for breaking down foods and all. they're involved in a lot of different chemical reactions in the body. It's a precursor to neurotransmitters. So really the, the, there's a bunch of them, but the two main ones that come to mind, like you know, your reward center, your dopamine, your serotonin involved in sleep. And there's just so much that goes on in neurotransmitter world. Um, and then of course the protein is involved in muscle synthesis and preservation and maintenance of muscle mass. And that's ultimately what we're trying to help you guys achieve is putting on more, more lean muscle mass for all of those reasons we just mentioned. I think that, does that round out the pack? I know you have you coffee can here. Coffee in, remember that's an oh. optional because some people don't drink coffee. You can have can't coffee. have caffeine. It yeah. the option there. The coffee is cool. I mean, it's, a ther it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's a thermogenic and people are like, well, I wouldn't, I like caffeine for weight loss, but no, that's really not the best way to look at it, but it is. It's a good jump start to the day. It's got adaptogenic mushrooms, helps with your stress response, fiber, fiber um, maca, green tea. So it's really, it's, it's loaded. It's a beautiful coffee. It's all USDA certified organic. So, you know, you're getting a really good, um, a healthy coffee. Right. And there's certain things that um, I know that they're not up here with our lean body pack, but I just want to say a few, a few things that can help increase metabolism. A few supplements, fish oil, because we know that's in our factor four. Uh, turmeric or curcumin, we know that's in our factor four. Sure. Green tea, which we have green tea in the um, coffee, as well as the super greens. Uh, vitamin B12 helps to speed up metabolism. That is in our multivitamin. Okay. Uh, vitamin D, it is known that uh, vitamin D deficiency uh, leads to, can lead to obesity. And also there's a, a correlation between low magnesium levels and obesity. So that's why it's all, guys, it's, it's right here. It's, it's easy. We made it easy for you to do. And of all the things that we're talking about with the nutrition and the, the um, exercise and the supplementation, guys, this is easy. Okay, the, the diet and the exercise are harder. Mm -hmm. uh, they're necessary, but they're harder. So if you don't know where to start, I mean, this is a great place to start. Yeah. Start supplementing with what your body needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know when you listen to everything today and then you're like, Whoa, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed yeah. and I don't know where to begin. Okay. I will yeah. say, start with the supplementation and then pick one aspect of the diet or, or the exercise, one little part of it. Like, okay, every day I'm going to set my alarm to move every 15 minutes. Okay. That's a goal. You've got to goal set and mm -hmm. goal setting is a major part of this, but goal setting and baby steps. Um, yes, you want to know your end goal. What is my end goal? I want to have this much body fat and, and increase my muscle mass, right? Great end goal, but you got to have baby goals to get there um, with food. Okay. I am not going to eat anything out of a box. Okay. There's a goal to start with. What is that going to force you to do? It's going to force you to consume the whole foods, baby, baby, baby steps. Um, I want to give, did I interrupt you? No, oh my God. Okay. no, totally good. <laughs> um, obviously I have so much to say. I'm trying to squeeze it all in, but I want to give you guys a couple like take home tools. Yeah, home. let's do that. Okay. So first of all, food log, um, write down everything you're eating every day, write down the amounts, measure it. Look at the back of, of, um, the back of a yoga container. It says a serving size, measure out the serving size it's such an easy way to overeat when we just eat out of containers mm -hmm. or don't, or, you know, just increase the serving size without even knowing what it is. I've even taught this to our kids. They know I like to read everything. And, you know, even if I buy them like these, you know, healthier cookies or like, serving well, sizes. how many can I have? I'm like, what's the serving size? Oh, two. Okay. That's all you get. So you got to know your, ser your um, serving sizes, food log, write it down. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of my fitness pal. It is a free app. Um, there's a lot of them out there. Why I like my fitness pal the best is because it, it's, um, it's data bank for food is so big. I have never found anything that I put in my body that is not in their system. So, and you can even scan things from the grocery store. It is free. They also have ways to upgrade. So like I have mine upgraded to the one that you pay for. So that way I can see my balance of my macros. Again, macros, proteins, carbohydrates, fats. But check out my fitness pal, download it and use their free app. It, it, you can plug in your weight, how much you want to lose. It, it'll give you a calorie goal. And then you log all your food in there. It is the only way to really know what it, you are putting in your body. You've got to see it. Um, you also wonder how much in the grind asked me earlier, like, well, how does one know how much they should weigh? 
There's an ideal weight calculator, and that's at, um, on a, um, a website, calculator.net, calculator.net. You plug in your age, your height, and it will give you an ideal body weight. It, it has, I think, five different um, formulas that they use. So you get five different ones. They're all pretty much the same. And then it'll give you your, oh, we didn't talk BMI. It'll give you your BMI, oh, which yeah. is the range weight. BMI. Yeah. Plug it there real quick. Mine's 26, which means I'm overweight, which is. Right. And the reason he's his eyes because he carries a lot of muscle. So BMI is your body mass index. It takes into account your height and your weight. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples that really throw that off. Ryan was one of them. Another one, say you take someone that's really short, but they carry a lot of muscle. They're going to show that they're obese based on the BMI calculator. Or you have somebody that I like to call it the skinny fat. It's really sarcopenic, sarcopenic obesity. It's when you are naturally just skinny. You, you, you look to the eye skinny, but you have body fat all over inside that you can't see. So on a BMI, it looks like you're doing great. Everything's rosy, but your body fat percentage is so high that you're just as unhealthy as someone that weighs 300 pounds, okay? Um, so use those. Don't necessarily focus on the BMI. Try, check out my fitness file, calculator.net. Oh, another way. So there's by BIA, bioelectrical impedance analysis. Um, doctor's offices, some do this. Um, some gyms do it. But you can also, I actually just looked it up on Amazon real quick so to give you a price. You can go onto Amazon and get a scale. Now, there's always a little bit of error with these. But guys, it's, it gives you a starting point and it allows you to watch your conversions. Um, $25 for this scale that also reads your body fat. It has, um, you know, it's based on electrical currents going in your body. Um, Okay, yeah, so those are the easiest ways to do this at home. I just had something else in my mind. Don't you remember? Um, circling back to our lean body pack, just want to let you know, guys, all of this. So um, you, you would obviously pick your men's or your women's and you're going to pick your flavor aminos. All of this without the, without the coffee, because we have that as an add-on. But all of it without the coffee is $89.95 per member. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. Two of these, two, two proteins, $89.95 and the retail $119.95. So again, easiest way to start your weight loss program and then start to piece everything else together. Um, some body fat percentages that I can just, or dogs are crying at the squirrel yeah. I'll <laughs> through the window. Down. I'm just going to give you some quick guides for body fat percentages if you want to jot it down just based on age. If you are 20 to 39 years old, females, 21% to 32% body fat. Males, 8% to 19%. Mm -hmm. Women, 40 to 50, I mean, sorry. Everybody, 40 to 59 years of age. Women, 23 to 33. Women didn't really change very much. Men, 11 to 21. And then ages 60 to 79. Women, 24 to 35% body fat. Men, 13 to 24% body fat. So again, this is what we want to focus on, losing fat. We want to focus on fat loss over weight loss, over that number on the scale. Um, okay. So you, said to, you said to uh, refrain from sugar if you're diabetic. Of course, you should be monitoring your sugar levels if you're diabetic. The um, Obviously, you may get a hypoglycemic episode if you're, if you're also on medicine. So be careful with that, of course, if you're a diabetic. Right. Checking your sugar levels should be part of that program too. Yeah, knowing your numbers, yeah. knowing your numbers. Yeah. Um, but if you don't look, you're going to ultimately win in the end by doing that. You're going to get into a better place for sure. Yeah. But watch it for the, like you said, yeah, watch it for the first, uh, first few. Uh, few there's, a, there's a bunch of questions coming in. So I'm just trying to pick the ones that are relevant. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, coffee's back in stock, by the way. Factor four will be back in within the end of May, for sure, by the end of May. Um, it's a frustrating one for us, for sure. Yes, cheese, yeah, lights up the same, bring, yeah. brings in our sugar. Yeah, that's stock, why you might think you're a cheese stock. addict, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, I do not drink coffee, exactly, which is why we have this as an add-on. So you'll see in when you're ordering the Lean Body Pack, there's a little section where you can add the coffee for an extra $15. This does not come in the pack because we know some people don't drink coffee or they can't have caffeine. Um, and our, our coffee does have the caffeine. Salt cravings. Look, okay, salt is good. Our yeah, bodies need needs salt. Um, if your body's craving salt, really, it's probably because you are low in it. I mean, it, it's a very old uh, school of thought that it's we- It's unfortunate though, because it's mostly to do with hypertension, retaining water and increasing blood pressure and have an effect, negative effect on heart disease, which really it's a, a problem that starts with sugar. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So when you but, start talking about kidney health and and and, and all of that stuff, yeah, right. It, 
unfortunately. So salt got a bad rap. We need salt. We need sodium. It's part of the electrolyte. Right. If you get imbalanced, you have difficulty with many of the other nerve functions. No, avoid the junk salt. Avoid the table salt. Like that's oh, the stuff. That, junky salt. Yeah, that's the stuff. I mean, you know, get Himalayan pink salt. Um, we have a different Zoom call every Monday. It's the same link. Yeah, we're having a just it's just an issue with distribution of invites due to the massive massive number of emails. Yeah, we so. fix we fix that though. So. All right, cool. Okay. I think, guys, we've uh, longest one we've done yet. Thirty-five minutes after twelve. Good job, Lisa. It was a lot of content. I hope you guys got some of those takeaways. And uh, we're, of course, always available for questions. Yep. Email. And this is recorded. This will be up on our YouTube channel today. Yeah, yeah sure will. So please, I know it's a lot to cover, but re-listen and share this, guys. Share this with your friends and family. Okay, it's a lot. All right, we're here for you. Okay. Have a great, super productive day in your week. Bye, See guys. ya. Bye. Almost.